Hi everyone, Edgar here from ULEP, and in this video I'll be giving a brief overview of what RAG is, what it can do for you, and a very simple demonstration of a RAG-based application that I'll be using to inspect network data using natural language. And although it is specific to network data, uh, it can definitely serve as an example that you can use to understand how to build your own RAG applications for other data sets. If you're not familiar with RAG, it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation which is a framework that enables you to develop LLM applications that can respond to prompts based on evolving data sets. And it's a very powerful tool because LLMs alone have two problems. The first is that they're stateless, meaning they don't have any memory. So if you take an off-the-shelf LLM, like let's say Llama 2, and you try to chat with it, you'll see that if your prompt requires information or context of a previous exchange, it will definitely fail to respond correctly. The other problem, and perhaps the bigger problem, depending on your use case, is that off-the-shelf LLMs only know what they were trained on. So if you ask Lama 2 what the consensus is on the possibility of a recession, or what presidential candidate is in the lead for the Republican or Democratic nomination right now, you'll get one of two scenarios. In the worst case scenario, it will try to answer by making something up that sounds believable, which in the industry is coin hallucinating. And in the best case scenario, the model might simply say it doesn't know. RAG frameworks allow you to better mitigate these two issues. And there are two main libraries that enable these types of solutions. The first is Langchain, and then there's Llama Index. Although both of those uh, give your LLM some wings, there are slight differences in that Langchain is considered to be a more general purpose library, whereas Llama Index is best optimized for search and retrieval tasks. So depending on your use case, one might be better than the other, but you don't necessarily have to stick with one. In fact, some developers might actually use both, and that's okay. It all depends on what your application requires. So now that we've covered what RAG is, what it solves, and what tools you can use to develop a RAG application, I'll get into the notebook to show you how you can use Langchain to explore your network data via language prompts. Now, before we begin, it's necessary to satisfy a few requirements. Uh, so there are a couple of packages that will need to be installed. The first is Langchain. You have Olama and Pandas. Uh, Olama is used to serve the open source models on your computer locally. And all you have to do is go to the website, download it, install it onto your machine. Currently, it works for Mac and Linux. And once it's installed, then all you have to do is run Olama run and then give it the name of the model that you would like to run. At that point, the model is served. Uh, it has pulled the model files, and you're ready to actually start querying the model. So we'll go ahead and import our packages here. Then we will load our data. So for reference, the data comes from the MACCD competition in 2012. The data actually comes originally as a PCAP file, but uh, once we download it, it's run through Zeek to generate some logs, and then we clean those up with pandas. At this point, we have our data as a data frame, as you can see here. And it is essentially, uh, well, approximately 2.5 gigabytes in size and 21 columns. So now that we have our data loaded, we'll go ahead and instantiate our model class. In this case, we'll, we want to instantiate the Llama 2 model. And next, we'll create the agent. So agents are actually where the real magic happens. And what agents do is allow the LLM to reason as to which steps to take next in order to accomplish a task or generate an accurate answer. Um, in this case, we're using a pandas data frame agent, which takes an LLM and a data frame as input. So we'll go ahead and run that now. And at this point, we're ready to start querying the LLM. The first thing that we're going to do is actually purposely have this fail uh, in, in order to give me a chance to discuss uh, the important aspects of agents as well as the prompts that you give it. So we'll go ahead and run that now so we can see what the error looks like. And that was quick. So here we've actually, it looks like we got a status code 500 error, and there's an error loading the model. So that was the unexpected error, but uh, I know exactly what this is. So we'll go ahead and restart Olama. Once Olama is restarted, then we'll go ahead and serve that model. 
So I'll say o llama run llama2. And now it should be ready. So go ahead and reinitiate these two cells and try that. There we go. Great. That's exactly what we're looking for. So as we can see here, um, there's a value error, and the error is that an output parsing error had occurred. The reason this is happening is that as the LLM, uh, the LLM actually takes steps to reason, so it should return the code necessary to manipulate the data frame. However, it, with some models, it may not return the code uh, in the way that the agent would like it to be, and it fails to parse it correctly, which doesn't allow the agent to then complete the execution step. So thus, it's, it's necessary to test several LLMs and see what works best. We'll go ahead now and use a different model. So we'll use a Mistral model, and we'll reinitiate our agent. And in this case, we'll repeat uh, a similar question. Uh, so basically, we're trying to understand which origin IP has the most rejected connections. So go ahead and pass that along. And in this case, we're also expecting an error here, and I'll, I'll discuss that once the error pops up. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the first thing that the LLM does is give you a thought process. So it says I need to find the source IP address with the highest number of rejected connections, and I can use group by function in pandas as to, uh, in order to group the data frame by origin underscore IP, and then count the number of rows in each group uh, by using the size function. So it has the right idea, but the issue, um, the issue at hand here is that because you said source IP, it's trying to come up with a column name, uh, in this case, org underscore IP, which actually doesn't exist. So if you go back and look at the column names here, you see that there's no such thing as uh, org underscore IP. What there is, and what we're actually looking for is this here, which is id.org underscore H. So we'll go back here. And instead of running this again, what we'll do is we'll actually provide the agent or um, the model with the appropriate column name. Um, and also, instead of just saying rejected connections, we're going to say constate equal to REJ, which is equivalent. So we'll go ahead and run that here. And as you can see, uh, the thought process is correct, but it tried a few different things. And the first time it tried, it actually failed. So as you can see here, there was an attribute error. Um, it says data frame object has no attribute called unique. Um, then it tried again. And in that case, it actually did get an observation, which was this IP address here. And so what it'll do is it'll return um, in natural language that response. So it'll say the ID dot org, or ig underscore h with the highest number of con states that are in rejected state is 192.168.202.83. And just for a sanity check, we'll go ahead and actually calculate that by hand. And in fact, you can see that 192.168.202.83 is the valid, uh, the actual, the accurate response here. So we'll go ahead and give it a different question. And in this case, we wanna know which response IP did that particular IP connect to the most. So the question is what ID.resp underscore H, which corresponds to the uh, destination of the response IP, did the origin IP equal to 192.168.202.83 have the most records with? So we'll go ahead and pass that along here. And we got an error. So output parsing error occurred. In order to pass this error back to agent, we'll have to try again. Uh, let's give it one more shot. There we go. 
and they actually got it right the first time. So the thought process was correct. Um, the action input was this line of code here. And the final answer was the id.resp underscore h that had the most records with id.org underscore h equal to 192.168.202.83 is 192.168.206.44. So let's go ahead and test that, make sure that it's correct. And in fact, it is, right? So 192.168.206.44 has the largest number of counts when our origin IP is set to this here. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to code um, and in order to accomplish such a complicated task while leveraging LLMs. But the important thing to note is that Langchain is relatively new and you have to be very careful about which LLMs you use with what modules within Langchain because certain capabilities and behaviors might be different for each. If you have any questions or comments about this video or any of the offerings that ULAP uh, currently has, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out through LinkedIn or YouTube. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. And if not, please subscribe to the channel to make sure that you catch the latest videos. Until then.